audiences were thrilled with the Born Identity movie and its portrayal of life in the CIA. So what's real and what's just movie stuff? The start of our week-long series, Secrets of the CIA, coming up next. Then All right, uh, is this what it's really like in the CIA? He has the skills you, stop right there. of a dangerous man. It's trained, conditioned, built to disappear. Wow, according to our next guest, there are a couple of things that Hollywood has gotten right and some they've gotten wrong. J.C. Carlson is a former undercover officer in the CIA and author of this book, Work Like a Spy, and the first guest in our week-long series, Secrets of the CIA. J.C., first off, is that what it's like in the CIA? You know, in my almost 10 years, I never had a day like that. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that would not be considered a career-enhancing moment. And you said it's not quite as exciting as, uh, as many people would think. However, it's actually it's intriguing because you, decur you uh, really rely more on psychology. Than anything else. Yeah, CIA, CIA officers rely far more heavily on psychology than they do on technology, and, and the gadgets and the gizmos make for great TV, but ultimately CIA officers rely on behavioral techniques that are relatively subtle, at least compared to what Hollywood would have us believe, behavioral, but still effective. Uh, behavioral techniques are the people you're studying, following, tracking? Things like targeting and elicitation and manipulation. It's, it's behavioral more than it is exciting or explosions. Right. Uh, you also say uh, if you want to work like a spy, uh, you should appreciate the power of recruiting. Yeah, in my book I, I bring lessons from the clandestine world to the business world and I borrowed the concept of offensive recruiting from CIA programs that encourage senior level defections from uh, high love from hostile nations or programs and the the goal is to demoralize or destabilize so in the corporate world it involves essentially turning your recruitment efforts against your competition and specifically that involves figuring out uh, exactly which individuals are most responsible on a day-to-day -day basis for whatever function or capability is giving your competition its competitive advantage. And then, obviously, the next step is doing everything you can to get those people to come uh, up for your company. Identify the weak link. It's good. Plus, uh, we have a lot to offer compared to most societies, too, of the people that we want to spy against. Right. You also say build a network up and down. What do you mean? Yeah, typical business and professional networking efforts are focused straight up. We're always trying to get face time with the boss or we're trying to find a mentor from the senior ranks of our industry. But that can leave you with, leave you with huge gaps in your network. And quite often, critical bits of information can come from relatively low ranks on the corporate ladder. For example, the, the HR assistant who can tip you off to the job vacancy before it's posted, or the admin assistant who can let you know that the boss is having a bad day and now is not the best time to ask for that raise. The best intelligence networks offer a wide variety of perspectives and access points. Right. You don't just need uh, the number to President Obama. It would be good to know uh, Robert Gibbs now that he's out of office. Uh, or, or even the guy in the mailroom for that matter. <laughs> exactly. All right. Now you say uh, step away from the spreadsheets and you bring up the analogy of Iraq and WAM, WMD. Yeah. This one really gets uh, the bread and butter of my book because it's about the value of human intelligence. And we're very numbers driven. We're all about data these days. Big about data. About drones. And, and it, it, you know, it's fine, but ultimately business decisions are made by people, and people can be irrational and unpredictable. So you can have all the data in the world and still come up with the wrong answer. And the, the example that I give from my own career uh, was back in 2003. I spent the summer in Iraq as part of the CIA's WMD search team, which is, I know, at this point kind of a dubious distinction. But at the time, we really did believe that uh, we, were, we would find WMD in Iraq. So... One of my, my assignments when I was there was I was charged with investigating a possible biological weapons facility. And on paper, it looked very suspicious. Uh, we had satellite imagery yeah. showing, showing that uh, there were middle-of-the-night transfers between this facility and Iraqi prisons and hospitals. Uh, we knew it had clean room technology. We knew the managing director had a Ph.D. in biochemistry. The place was under heavy armed guard, and we could see suspicious runoff and residue and pits behind the facility. It really looked suspicious. But when I showed up, sat down, had a cup of tea with the director, and asked the right questions, it turns out the only thing they produced was salt. 
Wow. It was a salt factory. And we checked and, it, we checked it out very thoroughly. And that's so. one thing, as much as we're making uh, progress technologically, it's still the per people that matter, which is relatively encouraging. J.C. Carlson, uh, former undercover CIA agent, author of this book, Work Like a Spy, Business Tips from a Former CIA Officer. And the you say former, you're not going to, I didn't out you, so I'm not going to get sued. <laughs> no, uh, thanks so much. It's a great book, great concepts, and thanks for your service. Thank you. All right.